move that leave be given to bring in a bill to make provision about the skills and knowledge required of a person driving a taxi or private hire vehicle and related responsibilities of taxi or private hire vehicle company operators and service providers to require operators of taxi or private hire vehicle companies and service providers to hold specified types and levels of insurance to make provision about the tax liability of taxi or private hire vehicle companies and service providers and for connected purposes. Mr Speaker, I am grateful for the opportunity to present this bill and am delighted by the strength of support from honourable and right honourable members across this House, reflected, I think, in the attendance today. <laughs> this is a bill that seeks to put fair competition and passenger safety at the heart of the taxi and private hire vehicle industry in London and across the country. The advent of new technology in the taxi and private hire industry is revolutionising the way that people are able to navigate our great capital city. Indeed, it is revolutionising transport in cities across the United Kingdom and across the world. At its best, disruptive technology drives innovation and increases competition, with enormous benefits for businesses and consumers alike. But as we have seen on the streets of London, it also brings significant challenges. This bill seeks to address some of the challenges that have been neglected for far too long. The debate about the future of London's taxi industry has been unfairly characterised as a debate between those who support competition and innovation on one hand and those who want to cling to the past on the other. Mr Speaker, this is lazy analysis. It is true that London's iconic black taxi trade is at risk. I would go as far to say that the threat to the black cab trade is existential. But the cabbies I represent aren't afraid of change and innovation. They aren't afraid of new technology, and they aren't afraid of competition either. But they are finding it increasingly hard to compete in a changing marketplace with both hands tied behind their back. And it's great to see Mr Speaker, even the Chancellor, taking an interest in their plight. <laughs> the Chancellor may, the Chancellor may need a taxi, Mr Speaker. I represent many black taxi drivers, Mr Speaker. Ilford North was once known as Green Badge Valley, and it's still not unusual to see taxis parked on the driveways of Gants Hill, Clay Hall, Barkingside and Woodford. I also represent hundreds of minicab drivers and drivers who work for new market entrants like Uber. Like many Londoners, I use black taxis, particularly in central London, and I also use minicabs and apps like Uber locally. I welcome the choice and enjoy the benefits of competition. But I also recognise, Mr Speaker, that the explosion in the number of private hire vehicles in London presents regulatory challenges and risks for passengers. An investigation for LBC by Theo Usherwood exposed the ease with which individuals can access a private hire licence without adequate insurance. We know that a number of vehicles are already on the road without appropriate insurance. Last year, The Guardian was able to demonstrate how easy it was for an Uber driver to pick up a customer having provided fake insurance paperwork via its operating system. Some private hire vehicles are illegally plying for hire and touting, increasing the risk of passengers getting into cars driven by unlicensed and unknown drivers with considerable risk to their safety. Mr Speaker, this is a legal practice and one that the regulators ought to be acting a lot harder on. <coughs> Guide Dogs UK found in a survey of assistance dog owners that 43.5% of respondents have been refused access to private hire vehicles, and it is all too common for LGBT passengers to experience discrimination. And though I enjoy price competition as much as anyone else, Mr Speaker, is it really fair to expect cabbies to compete on fares while TfL continue to put regulated fares for black taxis up, while apps like Uber are able to drive their prices down as profit shifting allows them to avoid paying their fair share, share of taxes here in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we fail to act, London's iconic black taxis will be driven off our streets. This is bad for competition, bad for passengers and bad for London. This bill proposes action in three areas to improve passenger safety and make competition fairer. 
so that our black taxi industry can continue to survive and thrive alongside minicabs and other private hire operators. Firstly, on the issue of training. Private hire vehicle drivers only undertake a rudimentary topographical test and in many cases do not undergo formal training. This sees many relying on sat-nav, which means the risk of collision is increased due to sharp braking or not focusing on the road ahead. This bill proposes that in order to obtain a PHV licence, all drivers should be required to complete an enhanced DVLA assessment requiring additional skills, such as how to drop off and pick passengers up, and wheelchair exercises to learn how to support the disabled. PHV drivers should also undertake an assessment on the principle of applying for hire and touting regulations so there can be no excuses for breaching regulations. And PHV drivers should be properly and fully trained and assessed in their obligations under the Equalities Act so that protected groups such as LGBT people and disabled people can travel with confidence. Mr Speaker, the second point in this bill seeks to address the issue of insurance. The current system requires hire and reward insurance for all drivers, but the responsibility for insurance rests with individual drivers. There is a higher cost for this insurance, which means that many private hire vehicle drivers can be tempted to opt for a cheaper form of insurance when accepted by a licensed operator. In order to resolve this issue, I propose moving to a system of operators' insurance that places the responsibility on operators as a prerequisite for obtaining their licence. This will deliver three key benefits for both passengers and industry. By guaranteeing that cars managed by the operator are insured so customers have confidence that they are safe, reducing the cost of insurance through bulk purchasing, therefore delivering better value for money, and making the regulator's case easier because checking a few thousand operators is easier than checking over 100,000 individual policies. Some companies, such as Addison Lee, already do this voluntarily, which is why customers and businesses can book with the confidence that is sometimes lacking around private hire operators. Finally, Mr Speaker, my bill makes provision for tax liabilities of taxi and private hire vehicle companies. It cannot be right that some companies in this industry are making huge profits but not paying their fair share of taxes. Lower fares are great, but some operators are frankly trying to drive their competition off the road through new apps by offering lower fares made possible by offshore tax arrangements, effectively robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'd like to pay particularly tribute to my right honourable friend, the member for Don Valley, who a week ago today brought her own 10-minute rule motion forward for transparency for multinationals. Her proposals would be a refreshing step in the right direction. This bill would introduce a requirement for the Chancellor or Financial Secretary to the Treasury to make an annual statement to this House on the progress of the OECD base erosion and profit shifting project and the action Her Majesty's Government is taking to ensure there is proper scrutiny in these areas, though hopefully the Chancellor might be better at making progress in that area than his own targets. It is a small measure, but it would indicate the view of this House that the Government needs to do much more to tackle tax avoidance. And these changes collectively would go some way to levelling the playing field. TfL need to go further than they currently propose, and in any event, these challenges also exist in towns and cities across our country. Mr Speaker, Gwyneth Paltrow once said, Brits are far more intelligent and civilised than Americans. I love the fact you can hail a taxi and just pick up your pram and put it in the back of a cab without having to collapse it. Uh, perhaps more profoundly, Professor John O'Keefe, a Nobel Prize winning neuroscientist, said some of the best navigators in the world are London taxi cab drivers. They have to learn 25,000 streets and how to get from one to the other. Mr Speaker, I am sure the whole House will agree that Brits are more intelligent and taxi cab drivers are the best navigators in the world. They are also small business men and women, providing a world famous service and struggling to make sure that they owe their families and make their families a good living. We owe them a chance to compete fairly and we owe it to our great capital city to ensure that this iconic black taxi industry and that great iconic black taxi itself isn't confined to London's history books. For these reasons, and so many more, Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Yeah. Order. The question is, the honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as have that opinion say aye. Aye. On the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? 
Lynn Brown, Neil Coyle, John Cryer, Clive Efford, Mr David Lammy, Kate Ossimore, Joan Ryan, Mr Varendra Sharma, Gareth Thomas, Mr Charles Walker and myself, sir. Wes Streeting. <laughs> Taxi and private hire vehicle operators regulation bill. Second reading what day? Friday 22nd April, sir. Friday the 22nd of April. Thank you. Order. The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day.